Welcome, I hope that you are doing well. By the end of this video, you will be able to add coda markings in the music that you are creating in MuseScore 3. I will cover how to add a DC Alcoda marking as well as DS Alcoda, and this will include the playback controls so that you will be able to hear the uh, coda markings uh, while you listen to the music that you're creating. Let's get started. So uh, you want to have MuseScore open, and I'm currently working on a piece here. This is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And the last two measures of this piece, I would like to have that be uh, a coda marking uh, that the performer would then jump to at the time that I uh, mark. So again, the, the coda is kind of uh, the ending of the piece. And so I'm going to show you how to add that coda marking now. We're going to start with a DC out coda marking. So the first thing you want to do uh, when you're uh, going to insert a coda marking is you want to separate the two um, measures with a double bar line. So you will go over to the left hand side to your palettes and you're going to uh, find the palette for bar lines. You will drop that down. And again, if you can't find the bar lines palette, just go up to add palettes, uh, you'll find it there. And so I see the double bar line and I'm going to click it, drag, and then drop it to the end, to the measure that I'd like the uh, bar line to be at the end. So you'll see it added the double bar line at the end and that separates uh, the first four measures with the last two measures. And again, those last two measures are going to be the coda. So uh, the next thing you will want to do is then add the DC out coda marking. So you will find uh, the palette for repeats and jumps. You will drop down the repeats and jumps uh, palette and you will find the DC out coda. Let's start with that. So it's dot couple out coda. That means that the performer is going to uh, once they see the DC out coda, they're going to go back to the beginning of the piece and they're going to look for the coda sign uh, to then jump to the coda. So again, you're going to drag and then drop it to the measure that you would like the DC out coda to go at the end of the measure. So DC out coda now appears at the end of this measure. And that's important for playback. You want to make sure that it's in the right measure uh, for the playback. So now the performer knows to go back to Da Capo, back to the beginning. So uh, we need to add our two uh, coda signs. So we have the two coda, and this is going to uh, you know, signal to the performer to go to the coda or the ending of the piece. And let's go ahead and put it at the end of measure two. So we've got two coda. So once the performer go gets to this uh, measure, they will jump to the last two measures. And again, the um, coda sign you'll need to add to those last two measures. Um, and that is this uh, bullseye looking sign. Um, so that's the coda. And I'm again going to click that and drag it and then drop it to the uh, beginning of the measure here. So again, a bit of a thing to remember is the DC Al Capo, uh, DC Al Coda, and then the two coda is uh, those markings you're going to want to put those at the end of each of those measures and the coda bullseye you'll put at the beginning. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Um, uh, now, uh, the one thing that uh, you want to make sure you will do at, uh, when you're adding the DC out coda is to separate these two measures here, the measure four and uh, five, whatever, uh, wherever that ball, bar line is, you want to separate those. And again, that's just typical in uh, um, classical music. And one main reason that we do this is so the performer uh, can see that coda very easily to jump to that. So again, let's look at uh, where we're going to find this break. We're going to go to up to add. Now, right now, I don't have anything selected. So if I go to add, and then you're going to go to frames, insert horizontal frame. So that's what I want. Now, it says no measure selected, so I need to do that again. So I'm going to select the measure I want the break to happen or the uh, frame to happen. So add, frames, and then insert horizontal frame. And now you'll see that separated the coda from the uh, first four measures. And you can see that break. Now, there's if you can see if I zoom in here, you can see this uh, dotted line. If you click on that dotted line, a box will appear right here. And I can now resize that break or a horizontal frame. And so now that looks pretty good. If you ever need to delete that, you just click on it, make sure that the, the dotted blue, the dotted lines turn blue, and then press delete. And then that will take uh, that away. If you ever need to undo anything, you can control Z, and that will undo your last move. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. So this is a DC Alcoda. Again, uh, let's go uh, to the playback so you can see uh, how this works with the playback. Now, if you're having any issues with your playback, uh, the main culprit is going to be this uh, repeat sign, um, so uh, toggle here. So it says play repeats. You want to make sure that's highlighted like you see now. If I click this off now like this, it will not play the repeats or the codas that I just marked. So you want to make sure you click that and make sure that uh, that is on or turn blue. 
And uh, again, that is the main um, problem that most people have with their playback on Kodos. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to the beginning of the piece and then press play. So now we'll go back to the beginning. And now we'll jump to the Kodo. OK, so that worked exactly how I wanted it to work with the playback. Uh, another uh, issue you might have with playback is uh, sometimes um, when you're working with repeats and things, um, you'll notice that you'll press the play button and nothing will happen. Um, what I found in those situations is to go ahead, save your file, close MuseScore completely, and then open MuseScore back up again. And usually that'll fix it and then you'll be able to play again. So that happens every once in a while. So uh, don't worry if your playback doesn't work right away. OK, so that is a how to do a DCL coda. And uh, DSL coda is very similar. Um, now, uh, as we're looking at this score, you I want to show you how to delete um, any of these elements. So you know how to delete the break. If you want to delete the DCL coda, you would just uh, select it. It would turn blue and then press delete on your keyboard. And any of these elements you can select, and then they'll turn blue, and you can uh, press delete. OK, so now I want to put a DSL coda there instead of a DC. And so the main uh, difference is that with a DS Alcoda or a Del Seno Alcoda is that that is going to um, instruct the performer to go back to the sign rather than the beginning. So the Da Capo or DC went back to the beginning. DS will go back to the sign. And the sign we use is this called Seno. And you can find it under the repeats and jumps again. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that where I would like it. And so it will go at the beginning of the measure, whatever measure you select. So now there's the sign. And now it will, uh, whenever the performer gets to the double bar line, that will go back to the sign and then jump to the code here. So this is kind of a short example, a little harder to see, but uh, I will go ahead and press the playback so you can see how this works. Oh, so uh, I had it in the middle, so I'm going to press rewind. It will go back to the beginning. So now we're going to go back to the sign and now coda. OK, again, um, if you're having any um, issues with the repeat signs with your playback, make sure that you have this toggled on uh, so that it plays the repeats uh, for the music that you are creating. So you now know how to add the coda markings to the music that you're creating in MuseScore 3. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section below. I will do my best to answer those. I have other MuseScore 3 tutorials available. I will put links to those around this video. If you enjoyed this, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. I thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.